Hello, this is Matt from TracyandMatt.co.uk and from Unboxings.com. Here I have the Sony Ericsson Xperia X10 Mini. Uh, Pro is going to be coming out in a few weeks' time, but obviously this is just the Mini itself. I'm going to have a quick look at it for you, do an unbox, and uh, we'll actually do a full review over the next couple of weeks. So, without further ado, let's take a look inside. On top, the handset itself, uh, and although I've seen this several times in the past, every time I look at it and take it out of the box, it just does feel um, and look absolutely tiny. Um, and indeed it is, as you can see in the size of my hand, uh, although I have fairly large hands, um, it is a tiny little handset. So uh, we'll come back to it in a second and I'll just compare it to something else that you might also recognise uh, and get a feel for the size. And underneath, as you can see here, we have a load of uh, express covers. So uh, we've got a sort of a pearly white one, we have a red one, which is sort of a metallic red, and we have silver, and uh, sort of a pink that fades to silver at the top, which is kind of cool, and uh, then this sort of uh, green, which uh, personally I don't think is quite so cool. We then have uh, the charger, it's sort of a UK 3 pin plug with a USB style connector on the other side. Um, it's pretty ugly as plugs go. I know it's not the sort of thing that you're going to really be spending a lot of time looking at, but hey, not exactly the best looking. We then have USB cable, so it's standard USB on one end, a micro USB on the other. It's a standard thing, though quite heavy duty looking cable. And then we have a wired headset. Let's just try and get that out. So yeah, standard looking wired headset, which uh, has different size sort of uh, rubber earbud covers, and then the headphones themselves. So we've got a four pole, three and a half mil jack on one end, which does mean that we can uh, plug that in and use our own headphones if we choose to. We have an inline microphone with a push button, which is quite large. Um, so it's, despite having sort of a tiny little handset, we've got a large headphone thingy. And then we have our headphones themselves, quite lightweight but uh, fairly small in-ear style, sort of uh, sound isolation style headphones. Um, they don't look too bad, um, but I suspect, as always, most people are going to want to use their own headphones rather than those that sort of come with it. And last of all, in the bottom of the box, we have the user manual or user guide and a couple of addendums, well, one addendum to the user guide and SAR information and FCC statement. The actual manual is uh, standard, well, uh, Sony Ericsson have been doing this for a while with their handsets. It's uh, sort of a large open out leaflet um, which you're going to need to know how to fold back again. So if you can't fold maps you won't be able to fold that either, so you get the idea. So the handset itself, as I say, is tiny. It does feel uh, kind of like a toy. Uh, although fairly weighty considering its size, but then again, I guess they've sort of densely packed all the stuff in there. Uh, 2.5 inch display on the front, uh, which is 240 by 320 pixels. Glass fronted, I'll just peel off that protector there so you can see it better. It's glass fronted and capacitive touch screen. Uh, do have a couple of uh, items on the front there, so we have an ambient light sensor, and probably a proximity sensor, and then the actual loudspeaker is just there, you can probably make it out there, it's pretty tiny though. Uh, underneath we have menu buttons, back buttons, uh, three of them in total in the middle there, and um, we'll see exactly what they do when we come to power up in a second. Nothing on the left hand side at all, this is typically where we would see the volume control, but there isn't. And on the bottom we have the 3.5mm headphone connector, and you'll notice it's a little bit unusual, that is because we can uh, sort of plug in the uh, special headphones uh, if you buy them from Sony or Sony Ericsson um, that are noise cancelling and powered so they actually uh, do sound a bit better but we'll talk about that when we come to the full review it isn't supplied in the UK they don't come with those extra special headphones they just come with standard then we have the micro USB sync charge connector on the bottom with a little cover at least the cover does stay out of the way uh, when you're using it but I suspect that's probably going to probably pop off and uh, stay off if, uh, if you're not careful with it little hole there is the microphone on the right hand side then which is where we now have the volume control uh, so that's fairly unusual they're typically on the left it's actually on the right on this device and then a uh, what looks to be a camera button dedicated camera button there so that's also quite good 
power button on top which will see power on and also puts the sort of screen into standby. On the back we have a 5 megapixel autofocus camera and it also has an LED flash and uh, the little grill there is actually the uh, main loudspeaker. So that's pretty cool. 5 megapixel camera in such a small device is pretty impressive and uh, Sony Ericsson are pretty good uh, at putting cameras on devices as well so I expect it will actually be quite a good um, camera anyway. So now we need to just work out how to get the back cover off um, which can be a challenge in itself. So let's see it just pops off like so kind of need to get your fingernails underneath it and just pop it off as you see there so battery is uh, well it's actually fixed battery don't think you can remove the battery from uh, from memory from actually seeing it before it is actually built in so uh, um, if your battery goes uh, gets knackered then um, well it's kind of send it away to Sony Ericsson or buy a new one really um, but yeah I don't think you can actually get the uh, battery out or take it apart SIM card goes here, right on the back as you can see, and uh, we've got already got a micro SD card in there. It is 2 gig in there at the moment, but it will, I understand, support up to 32 gig micro SD HC memory cards. Alright, oh, and also we do have a little sort of connector there, sort of an eyelet, so that we can connect up phone charms and lanyards and that sort of thing. So that just comes out through that hole there, and uh, around a little post on the inside. So uh, that's about it. Let's just quickly power up. And while we wait for that to come on, let me run down the spec as I've been given it. There we go, it's just coming on. Right, so we have uh, four hour battery life or talk time, 360 hour standby time. The battery is built in and it's 1320 milliamp hours. As I already mentioned, it's a 2.5 inch display, 240 by 320 pixels. It's probably the smallest Android handset out there, um, and certainly the smallest display on an Android handset, I'm sure. Say 5 megapixel autofocus camera with LED flash, pretty decent, and it will record video as, at 30 frames a second at 640 by 480 pixels. Have a built in FM radio with RDS, obviously, support music playback and all that kind of stuff. And it has Wi Fi supporting 211 BNG standards, Bluetooth 2 with EDR support, and HSTPA. It is quad band for GSM, so will work pretty much wherever you take it for voice, but only dual band for HSTPA and 3G. It'll work most places when you take it away, when you're roaming, um, but just be aware it won't work absolutely everywhere. It has a 128 meg internal memory and a 600 megahertz processor. So let's have a quick look around. We press the little button there to unlock, and I will set up in English United Kingdom. Save the language. Capacitive touchscreen is extremely sensitive. It's asking me to insert a SIM card, which I'm not going to bother to do just at the moment. I just want to go through the rest of the setup. Got the four corners, that's something, uh, sort of a feature that Sony Ericsson kind of made a little bit of is the fact that you've got the four corners. Because it's a small display, they're making use of the four corners for the uh, sort of icons or applications you can see there. So, first of all, we've got messages and email. We can compose a new message and we can write the message. And as you can see there, we have a sort of a T9 style keypad uh, that we can actually tap through, multi tap, or um, actually. T9 style, so that works quite well. Uh, I've changed the case, and uh, obviously we can delete. And yeah, that kind of works okay. If I click up in the corner, we can change the multi-tap or quick text, text, which is kind of T9 style. So there we go, as you can see there, and obviously it puts in the words that you actually come up with. But so uh, there isn't a QWERTY style keypad, but then I wouldn't really expect there to be, as it is really such a small display. Do we have an? We should have an accelerometer, but as it actually going to rotate here while we have the keypad up, um, that might be a setting that we can actually look at later, though. So we'll take that for now. And on the right, we have music, and we have a couple of sample tracks there. And that is quite impressive, actually. That loudspeaker sounds really good, and. Um, quite loud in actual fact considering that isn't full volume so that's impressive in itself now at the bottom on the left we have something here which has come up with fashion news so not something I'm going to be particularly interested in but it looks like some sort of uh, RSS type, uh, style sort of reader that you can actually have news feeds and that sort of stuff on uh, I would say not something that I'll be particularly interested in in terms of what's already on there but something that we can certainly change I'm sure and on the right at the bottom we have 
your contacts. So also we don't have any contacts at the moment because it's just been set up. But we can add a contact, import from SIM card, sync with the uh, service, or sync with Google contacts. And then we have favourites over here as well, so we can add a favourite. Clearly, as I say, we haven't got any set up on here at the moment, but you get the idea. At the bottom, we have that little arrow, which actually does bring up like the sort of full menu of uh, in terms of the applications that are installed, and obviously back brings that away again. The home screen itself has kind of three pages. So obviously, the first one just has the time and the date there at the moment. The next one has Google search, also has the voice search icon next to it, which is pretty cool. And then Timescape. Uh, I haven't set up Timescape, obviously, at the moment, but we can do so. So that brings things like your Twitter feeds and your Facebook and that sort of thing into one feed. Uh, and in actual fact, I'm wrong. There are actually four, four pages, not just three. So that's the fourth one there. This particular handset is Android 1.6, and many people criticise the fact that it is only 1.6. Um, Sony Ericsson have said that they will uh, eventually have a, a, an available upgrade to 2.1 or hopefully even 2.2 but it won't be for a while so don't expect to buy this handset and have an upgrade to 2.1 or 2.2 within the next few weeks it will probably be some time away, probably talking months away but um, yeah, if it works, if it does what you want it to do, I, I wouldn't focus too much on the sort of the version of the operating system. If it does the job for you, then it doesn't really matter. So in the programs, we have browser, camera, album, uh, email settings, and market. Android Market is there. One thing you have to be cautious of uh, with Android Market is some of the apps probably or possibly wouldn't work on the smaller display in terms of it being 240 by 320 pixels. Um, some require uh, a larger display, but uh, just bear that in mind. On the other pane, we have uh, and the FM radio, Timescape, and Facebook. Also, Play Mail, Google Maps is pretty cool. That's already on there as well. That's sync on video. And then we have Google Mail, Google Talk, Calculator Timer, Peggle, which is obviously a game, and Track ID, Geo Tags. So we have Road Sync, this, and Road Sync Mail and Calendar, as you can see there. That's so you can actually work with um, an exchange server for synchronizing your email because 1.6 doesn't uh, by default support uh, Exchange Active Sync. You have to use a third party app to make that work. And Sony Ericsson have chosen to include Road Sync. So it will work, but it does require a third party application. Not one of my favorites, but uh, it does do the job. So if we just go into the settings menu here and wireless controls and let's turn Wi-Fi on that's on and we're going to Wi-Fi settings and we'll set up a Wi-Fi network I'll put in the key okay we are now connected I must admit that there is a little bit of a faff to enter text I'm sure it's something you get used to but uh, it's been a long time since I've used a sort of a numeric keypad style T9 style to enter text I'm used to sort of a quality keyboard and having to flick between numbers and letters is kind of a pain but I say you probably get used to it so just have a quick look at the web browser and first of all it's going to Sony Ericsson site I'm actually going to stop that and I will pick where we're going to go to so we're going to go to our site right, which is obviously www. AC and doesn't like that. I'll spell it. And as you can see, as I already said, it has been some time since I've had to enter text in that way. Yeah, see how quickly that loads. Obviously I'm working over a Wi-Fi connection and on broadband. So progress bar is moving well, sporadically. At times it's moving fast, at times I'm moving quite slow, but it is loading as you can see there. Obviously it started initially kind of loaded the page, I guess what you would call uh, sort of full size, uh, rather than scaling all to fit on the display, uh, which is something that um, this version of Android typically does um, so that's not unusual but it is loading and it has rendered the page well it does appear to have rendered the page perfectly well in actual fact albeit as I say quite quite large and if you push the button in the left corner there it shows you the full page but it also does show you a preview in a larger preview of what's exactly under your finger so as you scroll around you can actually see full size what's immediately under your finger which is quite cool um, but also it will 
allow us to zoom out. So we could zoom right out if we wanted to and see what the full page looked like. Doesn't look fabulous on a low res screen. As you can see there, it's kind of dropping portions of the text out. So you can't really read it, but that's really to be expected from this type of and size of screen. If I rotate, it's not actually working with the accelerometer. Again, that's probably something that we'd have to set up. It's not uh, working by default, so never mind. But that is a quick look at the browser. Let's pop into Google Maps and see if that does pick up GPS. Um, we're, bear in mind, we're obviously indoors. So maybe won't initially. Let's just see. Give it a second or so. It picked up anything as yet. Don't support multi-touch. So two finger zooming isn't actually possible. Obviously we do have the zoom in the corner. But it isn't picking up my location, which is a bit of a shame. And if we pick up the menu and click, click my location, I haven't uh, saying that isn't enabled in system settings, so that's fine. Uh, but you get the idea. Google Maps works as Google Maps should. Nothing particularly clever about it, but it doesn't support the multi-touch. Bit of a shame, but that's a, something to do with the fact it's Android 1.6 and also the settings on there as well. Uh, Going to quick have a quick look at YouTube. And we'll do a search for me. And it's not going to come up with it, so let's spell it. Okay, and we'll search. That's basically my YouTube profile name. We can see some of the stuff that we've got on there. And let's just pick that wave demo and see how that works. Now that obviously is working in landscape. As I say, there is. Hello. So after a few seconds of buffering, that is playing. That's playing quite well. And it's certainly watchable, it's a little bit fuzzy, but then it is YouTube anyway, so it's kind of to be expected. I think most people don't expect too much from that sort of YouTube on a small device. Take a quick look at the camera. Obviously we've got some things here that are colourful enough that we can just kind of put in the way. And don't want, do I want to geotag photos, I'll just say yes for now for the sake of it. And take a quick snap. And that's come out really quite well. As I mentioned already, uh, Sony Ericsson are kind of known for their cameras on their phones being quite good. 5 megapixel isn't bad, cons again, considering the size of the handset, it's tiny. Um, so that's an impressive picture. Um, I think, in terms of the photos that you'd want to take with a, a camera phone, you know, your ad hoc photos, you're out with your mates, you're down the pub, that kind of thing, it uh, really is more than adequate. To, to be honest with you. Uh, in terms of a size comparison, let's just bring in a device that I'm sure many of you, in fact everybody will have seen before, so that's obviously the iPhone 3G, 3GS, um, and well it's a marked difference, obviously it's tiny in comparison. Certainly easy to slip in your pocket. It is a little bit thick and chunky, but again that's because they're cramming everything into that small space, so you get an idea of the size there um, and the weight. The actual dimensions though are 83mm from top to bottom, 50mm wide and 16mm thick. So quite chunky by comparison to some other handsets, but um, obviously got to cram everything into a much smaller space including that 5 megapixel camera. And it weighs 88 grams which is a bit of a surprise because uh, I guess it's because it's small and obviously the pressure it exerts on your hand being smaller. Um, it feels heavier than just 88 grams um, I would say feels almost a hundred or maybe even more but it's just again down to the shape and the size so um, that's obviously why. So this has been the Sony Ericsson Xperia X10 Mini. I'm going to have a full review for you over the next couple of weeks. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter, twitter.com slash tracymat. I'll be back soon with some more videos and reviews on tracymat.co.uk but for now thanks for watching.
Bitdefender is dedicated to protecting people's digital lives, so working with Unboxings.com to help preview and review the latest technology is a perfect fit.